everyone. Today I'm going to show you pretty much beginning to end how to make this awesome, you can call it a scarf, you can call it a shawl, but as you can see it's, it's very wide and very long. What I used is the double knit loom, the rotating double knit loom from KB Looms. This is what it looks like and it's basically on a dolly and you could spin it. Uh, it's really really nice to work on it that way. Now they do have a new loom topper out. If you happen to have this topper this will work. You can use this topper on this base if you would like and you can actually there's enough pegs on this one if you want to make this even wider from about there to there you can make it about that wide if not wider on the other loom. But to do it like this, either one of these, you just have to have 40 pegs. So this one, I've got more than 40 pegs. I've got marked from here to here is the section. From here to here is the part you're going to be working on with this loom. Now the tools you're going to need is, of course, a loom tool, a crochet hook because we are going to finish up the cast on with a crochet edge uh, just gives a really nice edge. A pair of scissors and a tapestry needle. I will be showing you how to do your collar changes with using a Russian join. That way you don't have quite as many little pesky ends coming out. Now for yarn, I just picked three different collars of Caron Simply Soft that I already had that I thought would go together and just have a really good holiday feel to them. And everybody keeps comment commenting, this green right here is actually the same green up here. It's just, it's strictly an optical illusion. Had someone who thought I was using like five different colors in this. Nope, optical illusions. Now what is really neat about this project is that the back and front are negatives. So as you can see, this section is a white background with red detail. You flip it over, it's going to be a red background with white detail. The only part that is not a negative like that is the green stripes here. Before we get started, first thing we got to do is you're going to want to mark your loom. Uh, we are using 40 pegs on this loom technically 80 but when I'm talking about counting I'm only counting this outside circle because we will be using the opposite pegs on the inside uh, so we are doing 40 pegs from here to here is the side we'll be using to help us along which really to help you with reading the chart what I do is I separate it down into tens but I will show you here our arrow is peg one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Now it's forty pegs, so there is not a single peg that's in the middle. So there are actually two. So I've got both those marked. That's why this one is with a yellow one. Just help it stand out. So twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. 29 and 30. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 40. So there we go. We've got all of our pegs marked. Remember, starting with your arrow, and you'll be going over here. This right here is the center point. Now, for our cast on, we're going to start with the green. But you do want to take a good bit of yarn in a contrasting collar and just have that sitting over to the side for a moment. A um, couple notes. If you want to use a tensioner, which is essentially any tube that you run the yarn through, uh, you can use a tensioner if you want. The only problem is it'll fit through these pegs fine. These back pegs might give you a little bit of trouble since they are closer together. Um, so I will not be using a tensioner and also once you get to the graph part you won't be able to use a tensioner anyway. So you'd only be able to use it for just a few rows. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a slip knot and I'm tying it. My help if I zoom in a bit. I'm tying it before just so these the strands will just stay out of our way and not be bothering us. Now watch how I wrap this. Because this right here, peg right behind it, is going to be used as well. I'm going to wrap these slow. And this is how we wrap. Right now we are just doing our cast on. Okay. You can see we got, I'm going to zoom out a little bit more. We've got the 40 pegs marked. What I want to do is just kind of push those down a little bit. They don't have to go all the way to the bottom because we are just working with a number four worsted weight yarn. So it's not really taking up a lot of space. Here though is where this yarn comes in handy. You want to fish it down right in front of your first peg here. And you want to run it along this track. As you can see, I got, you want to get a collar that is contrast, a very, very large contrast because you won't be really dealing with this until the project is a, a lot longer or off the loom, however you want to do that. But what I'm doing is I'm running the strands through these leg holes because this is where your working product project is going to be coming down through. So I run the yarn through all those leg holes and as you can see I've got all this extra yarn. That is not needed at all. So you can actually tie this kind of tight if you want. I got them through the legs and I'm tying a bit of a knot. And I don't want this to come undone while I'm using this, working on this project. So I'm actually double knotting that. And just to keep these extra strands out of my way, I'm going to cut those off. If you're concerned, why not? Triple, quadruple knot it, whatever you need to do. Um, you just don't want this to come undone because this will just, we're going to crochet this cast on later. Don't get too stressed out about that. It's actually very, very simple to do as long as you have a crochet hook. Um, but yes, we will be finishing this off later so that the cast off and the cast on will have a very similar appearance. Okay. So now we, this is the first part of our cast on. The next row we will be counting as our row one. Let me zoom in so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. Our last strand came from this peg up here. So you skip the first peg, unless you're changing collar. That's really the only time I found any issue is when I change collar, I like to use both of these pegs. Um, but for this part, I'm going to be slipping the first stitch, which basically means the yarn that the peg is coming from, we do not work that peg at the beginning of each row. It helps to create a smoother um, edging. There we go. But what you'll be doing is you're going backwards and you'll be following that exact, that exact, that exact, sorry, that exact path, guys. Hope you can see, as you can see, I'm following the exact lines. Just ignore that black strand under there. Go all the way back to your bin. We are at our last ones. I went ahead and worked ahead a bit just to save a little bit of time. So we're at our last peg. This one's going to look kind of weird just because we've got it anchored over here. But we'll keep this anchored in for our first few rows. But all you do, since this is the last peg wrapped, you want to make sure your yarn is held tightly because I actually kind of tied that a little too tight. But knit it off and that kind of holds your yarn in one place. Now one thing that is nice with working like this 
is instead of spinning it and see what's happening, my yarn's getting all tangled up. When you are working on rows, take your yarn, throw it down the middle. The yarn is not in the way at all because now all you do is you go around and you knit off. You can do the inside first. You can do the outside pegs first. It doesn't matter just as long as all 40. Actually, there's 80 pegs in use, 40 on the front, 40 on the back. As long as all 80 pegs are left with only one stitch on each. And what I'm doing is very simple. I'm just taking this bottom loop, pulling it over the top. Very, very simple. And this is your the finish of your cast on and what we will refer to as your row one. So go ahead and knit all of those off, even on your inside. I'll show doing a few of the inside ones. As you see, your first few rows is going to be loose. So you might have to kind of zoom this in a bit. See how these ones are real loose when I'm pulling them up? There really isn't a lot of tension on the project yet since this is the beginning. So when you pull those over, you might want to go ahead and push those down just a bit so that they don't come back over when you're working the rest of your project. Cast on row one is done. Let me do a close up so you can see how this looks. If you can see these are kind of floating towards the back side right now, do not worry about that. It will even out as we work. Now I did come across a problem I was going to just fix and then restart my next section, but I do want to show you a couple things. You can use whatever yarn you want. It just needs to be about a worsted weight. It could be a thin worsted or a heavier worsted. You will be fine. That is a number four yarn. It's a, a lot of your normal weighted yarn. I will have the wraps per inch and all that in the PDF, so don't worry if you're confused at all. But I do want to show you something, especially if you're using something with mixed fibers or something, anything with wool or actual animal fibers in it, sometimes you will get like these little fuzz things stuck to it. This is acrylic, but at least this happens so I can show you. You just cut those off as close as you can to the string and just get rid of those. But there's another issue that I came across that sometimes you will come across when you purchase yarn. And it's this. The knot of death. I don't want this in my project. I don't want it to look like that. So what I'm doing, and since this isn't a variegated yarn, so it, you know, it won't mess up my design too much. But I'm just cutting it directly out. There's the knot. Throwing it away. There are multiple ways I can do this, but I have became a huge fan. I'll show you a couple ways. Sorry. And you choose just, you know, maybe by your skill level, your impatience level, whatever you want to do. Two different ways that you can join these yarns. Join this yarn, sorry. Uh, because we will be using collar changing with this later. And I will actually repeat the technique to show you the collar changing, but you will be able to skip the video if need be. But what you want to do is you want to cross your strands like this. This is going to be the knot that holds it together. If you are in a hurry and what we'll be doing is a Russian join, if that intimidates you, make sure you have a good bit of string on both sides. And as you work your project, you just work it and this knot will be almost invisible. Now you will have some issues. See your ends will want to stick out, but if you have it running long enough, you can kind of snip those ends back. But as wear and tear happens to your project, and this project is not an overnight project, it's going to take you a while and a lot of concentration. So you're not going to want all these ends poking out. So what I am doing is a change that will require a tapestry needle. I'm using a thinner one. Uh, let me show you some of my other ones because some of these you're going to recognize because you've gotten them with looms and everything. We all probably have a hundred of these little plastic ones like every single loom comes with. If that's all you have, you can use it. It will work. 
My personal preference, though, is to go with the ones with the smaller tip, especially working with a worsted weight yarn. And this one is a four ply, which means if we untwist this, we're going to notice four separate strands of yarn in this, which actually makes it easier to do this Russian join. So like I said, I'm going to show you using the same collar in case you come across this in the middle of one collar you're using. It doesn't matter if it's in the middle of your chart or whatever. You may end up having to back your project up a bit just to have enough yarn here. Let me move this out of the way, do some zoom in. We've got our yarn twisted like this. Now we're not going to be running all of this down through for our Russian join. We only need just a bit. And what you do is you need to thread this with your yarn. Now there are lots of ways to do this. that hooked. Kind of want to put some tension on it. Pull the needle through. See that folded? Kind of push it through until the strands are through. Now you may want to practice this a little bit because this is kind of a different way and I always make sure my tail is at least as long as my needle if not a little longer doing the same collar here may seem a little confusing just make sure that this one is over here and I will show you what to do with this side you will be working on the other side of this loop and what we are doing is we will be untwisting this yarn a bit kind of running our needle through the center essentially. You're going to feel like you're just completely unrolling it but you will notice that it rolls back up once it's on the needle. You just got to try to make sure that you're trying to weave it through as many of these as possible. If it's not perfect that'll be fine. This one I'm missing a few just so you can kind of see want to go down. I usually go down until my needle's about full because I honestly pull out a little extra yarn than what is needed because over years washing and stuff this will come loose a little bit but knowing how it's hooked together you don't have to worry about a big hole unraveling. You know what I think I've gabbed enough and this is enough here. Now I want to show you something that I typically wouldn't have done, but I just wanted to do it just so I could show you. All right, let me move this right here out of the way. Here is our second yarn here. This is the tail. And see, I didn't put that needle all the way up to this loop, but we will be tightening it, tightening, tightening it, tightening it up to that point. Sorry, guys. Our needle has this mess on it. We're just going to push it through one of these strands is our tails so you kind of push oh, that one's a little tight this one is my tail sorry my camera's not focusing in the way it should once you get the tail out you tighten that up and as you can see it tightened it all the way up to that knot where the yarn is joined this right here can be the scary part because you want to make sure it is staying twisted but I always like to go down and go ahead and clip off this extra strand here and as you can see I'm kind of clipping it off where to to where it is kind of stopping now through the project that's most likely going to unravel just a little bit more and that's perfectly fine because it is wound up in that much so it's not going to come undone, at least not very easily. Someone's going to have to work at it. Okay, for the second part, we don't need this much yarn. So we can take the 
working yarn coming from the loom, which is the side I'm doing, or coming from your yarn itself, however you're doing it, neither way is wrong. So I want to shorten that, and now we will thread this needle. With my nails, it's making it a little hard, so I'm, that's why I'm pushing mine over to the side. You pinch it, and you kind of wiggle it through. Okay, so now, of course, we, here is our working yarn. Here is the side we already did. You can start right on the other side of the knot if you want. If you start down a little lower, it's fine because when you tighten up this string, it will pull it back up to this knot. Now, if you're using a wool, I would suggest trying to get it as close to the knot as possible just because of how bad wool can felt. As much of an amazing fiber as it is, felting is somewhat of an issue. See, I'm just untwisting a little bit, putting my needle through, and then pushing it up some because if you have too much and your entire tail winds into it, that is perfectly fine. It actually saves you some extra work. So we'll say uh, a little bit more and we'll just say that's good enough. See, it's kind of filling the whole needle. So I'm Pulling it off the end, which pulling it off this end may be a little more difficult. Here's my tail. I'm going to pull my tail. It's not going to pull real far. And then, see like that looks really jacked up right now. But as you smooth it out and kind of, I always try to retwist it just to make sure those twists are locked in. And I do the same with this side. And my join is just this little tiny spot here in the middle. Come on, camera focus. Little tiny spot right here in the middle is our join. Compare that to the normal yarn. It is, in this project, You it's completely undistinguishable. You will not see this in this project. You, Like I said, you may have some little ends, which even honestly, it's kind of hard to even see where the ends are. Like this one is poking out just a little bit. And this one, we didn't have to snip or anything. It wound, it pulled right up in with this twist, which doing it the way it honestly, you know, we don't have any ends sticking out at all. This one we have a little bit. It can just be a little difficult to measure it correctly. And I'm going to sit this over here because that one is my favorite tapestry needle and I would be sad if I lost it. All right, guys, let's proceed. So we did our row one. We have two more rows to do in the green then I will show you how to switch the yarn to let me see what is our next color red so, as you can see I didn't work all the way to the end now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pen I mean I didn't knit off all the way to the end now this main project one half is going to be one collar the other half, the front and the back, are going to be negatives, which I'll show you what that means in a bit. So you want this new color to start right in the middle here. So you can undo your stitches and like temporarily mark it with something. I already went ahead. I already went ahead and thread the red yarn. And all you do is you throw the green over top of it. Okay, throw the green over top. And then you kind of untwist it. And we are doing this the exact same. Like I said, if this is a new technique, I would suggest practicing a bit 
on some scrap yarn before doing it in this project. Um, just because if you end up kind of shredding some of the yarn or whatever, it's still going to look good in the project. It's not going to... Okay, that's straight. Um, let me see here. I'm going to wrap a bit more. Because you can kind of unravel quite a bit of it. Just ravel it back up. Twist it back up on the needle. My needle's pretty well full. Oops. So pull it back. Wow, I can't hold on to anything today. Just make sure there's enough this tail that you don't end up accidentally pulling it out. Pulled it through. Oh, I got it first try. Now you tighten that up so that it tightens it up to the to the collar change part. And then you just kind of bring these down. Sometimes you'll notice that it will lock right above the knot. That is fine because that will just pull right down, especially once you are tightening it up. There we go. And then as I am bringing it down, I am trying to even out any of the twists that got twisted weird. And see, I just have a little bitty piece standing up here. Go ahead and snip that. And now, we're doing the other side, which if you tighten it out, you can see right there. But where is my centerpiece? This blue dot is my centerpiece. So I have to move this to where that blue dot right in the middle. That's where you want your center. So you want to start weaving right after that knot. So let's get this threaded. There we go. That is threaded. So now we start right on the other side of this knot so we have it in the correct placement. And we go ahead and do the same thing. Except you're going to be working toward the yarn coming off the loom instead of away from it. Because you're going to be a lot closer to it than just joining collars in the middle of a row. Because from the rest of the, for the rest of the project, this is how, well until you get to your, your other end, this is how you're going to be. For the rest of the project, unless you are connecting the same collars. This is how it will be done. Just like this. Okay, I'd say that's enough. So kind of pull it off there. Now seeing as how I'm pulling it off right at that point, it's going to be a little more difficult. Got my end yarn. And as you can see, that's pulled that up over top of this. That is perfectly fine. There's that knot. Get all those twisted right. Cut off my end string here. And zoom out so you can see. Here is the Russian join, joining two different collars at a specific point. Now the reason I did that, hopefully I did this right and didn't accidentally, uh, wait, did I miss one? Okay. So there we go. My yarn must have slipped. It did end up a little longer than expected, but that's fine. Just knit these off. I'm going to knit them off loose. Knit these inside ones off. You 
you want your join in here somewhere. The closer you get it to the middle, the better. Okay, I think we've done enough rows. We can go ahead and take this knot off right here. It'll just be down here. If you're worried about it getting in the way, it will... If you're worried about the cast on string getting in the way, it's just tied in with these. However you want. That way all these loose strands are together. Zoom out so you can see. All these loose strands here are hooked together because this green one you will be using at the end as just the pull string to pull the tail through. First three rows are done. Now our next two rows, exact same as before. Before we start our chart, you should already be seeing a few inches coming down of your progress. Now, what I did was I went to the end of the row and then I just cut a few inches. If I had wanted to, I could have made um, basically a Russian join and took the string out and put the loop on this and then tightened it up. That's a lot of work, guys. So I just cut the tail along and I'm just running it along with some of the stitches. You should want to do at least four or five of them if you do it this way. So knit all those off. And then we are going to start Okay, so the brim is done. Kind of show you how this works. So this is where I was talking about you want your color change kind of in the middle. And what you do is you will twist. This is the front. So our background color is going to be red. So this whole first row we're going to do red. That will kind of help you remember what your background color is um it does take some practice and definitely take your time with this okay so if we do this the background color is not going to stay red so we twist it again so that the background so that that's red now when we get to the next one you want to twist it in the opposite direction the only reason for that oops is so that uh you don't end up with big knots. And I'm getting to the end of my Russian join here, and that is fine. You do want to try to keep these the collar changes as close to the middle as you can. If you notice one is going off too much, you can just do that. Let me work a couple more of these, and then I will finish out the row. And then we will have a look at that chart. And I'll work the first row with you. And then let you guys have at it. Now what is nice is I have this clamped right now. But if I was holding it, I'd be holding it just between my legs. And I can just twist it just a little bit to go from one spot to the next, which is really nice. All right, finish out this row. When you're at the other end, I just hold the stitches and go ahead and take those last two off. Knit everything else off and we'll do the next row. At this point is when you will really need your PDF to really follow through with the rest of this project simply because of the chart. Of course, there is other help. There's uh, direct links and such in the video, but this chart, you want it printed. But what we have here is this is a U-shape. Just think of it flat. And how I said the background color is red, and that's what we're looking at. Just think of it like this. It's flat. This is the side that's red. This is the side that's white. Ignore the white. Let's just work on this red because everything's going to be opposite. 
So for this first row, it's flat. Our working yarn is over here. So for this first chart, we will start on this side. It work from this side over and every CV squares, every 10 pegs is marked and this is where it really comes in handy because you will be going back and forth and checking this pretty frequently and you've got those little markers so that if something's not coming quite right um, you can figure out where the mistake is at. So again the yarn is coming from this side red is our background color so we got one two stitches Actually, let me hold my loom tool think of these squares as the pegs so that's your 40 pegs right here so peg one and two is red, three is white, four, five, and six is red. I'm sloppy. Seven is white, eight is red, nine is white, ten is red. I will do those first ten with you so you can see how I go about changing the colors. So here we go. Peg one and two are your background color so they are red so see I'm gonna have to twist that two times so that the red is right there I'm trying to make sure I keep that in the middle as much as possible peg one so peg two is red we've got to twist that two times peg three is white we only have to twist that once Let's zoom in a little more Peg four is red. Peg five is red. Peg six is red. Seven is white. Eight is red. Nine is white. And peg 10 is red. Oh, peg 10 is red. Sorry, didn't realize I got out of view. I'm going to finish this row. Now before you keep going, you want to double check, make sure your row is right. Count your background and your foreground pegs again, or squares on your chart again, just to make sure everything is right. And then you knit off, push it down. Your next row, you're starting from this side. So you move your line down, you're now in row two. You will start from this side and you work from this way all the way to the last peg. So from this side to this side. Again, a suggestion every single row. I go ahead and lock in my last pegs, then double check it before knitting off. And you will slowly work your way down once you're at the once you finish up the chart you get that last row done that is when your color change happens so for this first one we are doing a red background and a white foreground the next one you will be changing out your red for a green you have a white foreground and a green background okay as I'm about, I don't know, halfway through my first little graph, as you can see, the background is the opposite of the front here. Just a little bit of it, but you can still see that's white with red, and this is red with white. What I'm going to do now, though, is I'm going to go ahead and finish up this cast on, cast on edge and get rid of these extra strings. This can be done at any point during the process of making this. Uh, this is my personal preference of when I like to do it. I like to do it kind of as soon as I can, then these extra strings are out of the way and I don't have to deal with them anymore. Okay, here's what, let me zoom this in. Here's where we're going to need our crochet hook. Some, something to remember we are starting here is our cast on tail we are starting at the opposite end and we are going to do a crochet chain which if you're unfamiliar with that don't worry you just need a crochet hook 
I honestly should have grabbed one with a little larger hook on it. But we are going to pick up, do it this way, pick up this first stitch and then pick up this second one. Bring the second one through the first. We got another stitch right here. And you are doing this keeping the other collar out of the way. Ah. Sorry guys. Okay. <laughs> got the third stitch. Wait. Now we are on to our fourth. And we're doing the same thing each time. We are picking up and get all the, there you go, you want to make sure you get all the strands. Picking up the next stitch and then pulling it underneath that previous stitch. And we are doing this all the way across here. If it gets too difficult for you to follow, because when we are doing this, we are tightening up, essentially tightening up that next stitch as we are doing it. But if you are having trouble following the string, I will show you what it will look like without it. And one th good thing, when you're done with this, you just pull this string and it comes all the way out. And this is what your edge is left looking like if you had that string in in the first place. So here's the next stitch. Bring it through. As you can see, watch the next stitch is going to tighten up. See, when I get closer to it, it tightens up on me. It's not too hard to see. Do that all the way to the end. Here's what the chain looks like. I'll show you what to do. Last one. Last one. Pull it through and then you take that tail. Take the tail. Pull it through. And there you go. That is not going anywhere. Uh, you can take your, I suggest taking a crochet hook or a tapestry needle and kind of weave this in through the green a bit and cutting it off. But see how much better does that look? I don't have the string hanging there. I have this nice finished edge. To me, it just makes me I guess more determined to work faster on the project because I'm already seeing some of the things that are going to be how it's going to look when it's done. I mean, it may just be me. All right, now it is time to finish your projects up. See, look, I have a little strand sticking out. I put it in there the correct way so I can just cut it. Anyway. Go ahead and finish the project up. Basically, repeat your charts as many times as the PDF says, or less, or more, whatever you choose. Then you redo your stripes. Three, two, one, two, three. You don't have to do them in this order. Do them in any order you want. I'm going to do them in a different order just to show you how it would look. Get everything up to that other end, and I'll show you guys the cast off. All right, let's get started on the cast off. Now what I'm doing is a basic bind off or cast off. The main difference is that it's a rake style. So first of all, we need to move stitches. You're gonna take all these stitches from these back pegs, move them to the corresponding peg on the front. So I will do a few of these, show you what they look like. Now, they're going to feel a little loose. You might want to push them down some. Let me zoom in a little. Okay, so we take this loop here. Put it there. You can see how it's loose. 
You can actually pull down on it underneath to tighten that up if you need to, if you're worried about dropping the stitches. This is not an, a very easy project to pick up drop stitches with, so I'm going to warn you. So I'm doing all these pegs will have two stitches. Go all the way around. Your loom should look like this. Every single peg has two loops. So we're going to the side where our working yarn is coming from. And we are going to e-wrap pegs one and two. They will have three stitches on them. We're going to take the top two stitches off. Sorry, take the bottom two stitches over the top stitch. You take the second one, move it to the first, knit off, and then you want to fill in that gap. So now this is going to have one stitch, and that is perfectly fine. So we e-wrap two, that's your step one. Knit off, that is your step two. Step three, move the second one to the first and knit off. Step four, fill in the empty gap. I'll show you a couple more times. E wrap two, knit both off. This second one, move it to the first and knit off. And then we fill in the gap. Do this until you get to your very last peg, and then you want to cut, oh, about four or five inches worth of string and pull it through that last loop. But I'll show you. There are the last three left, so I will kind of work them with you if I can get a hold of yarn. So you can see exactly what I do. Okay, let's e wrap the two and knit off. Number two, on to number one, knit off. Fill in the empty hole. That gives you two pegs left. The last one has two loops. This one just has one. E wrap both. Knit off. Peg two to one. Knit off. You obviously don't have to move it since this is our last peg. But what you do want to do is cut your yarn, have an end long enough to weave in. Take your loom tool, take the piece you cut. Oh, I'd help if you grab the whole thing. There you go. Pull it up through the loop, or you can pull it down through, it really doesn't matter. And here is our cast off. It's a very nice crocheted looking cast off. I really, really like that bind off. Okay, guys, let me zoom out again project is done such a awesome scarf it's very wide you see both my hands here so it's very wide it's very long and it's very festive so I really hope that everybody enjoyed this video and that it was uh, very helpful any questions and comments please leave in the comment section below for more information on the loom I use, the pattern, uh, the yarn, all of that, make sure to check out the video description below. Check that out. Other than that, make sure that you have liked, shared, subscribed, uh, not have your notifications turned on so whenever I put out new videos, you'll be notified of them. Thank you guys so much for watching this and I hope that everybody has a wonderful day.